Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to continue our discussion on barriers. Now a barrier is a structure that you build between a noise source, let's say a garbage truck, and your bedroom. You're the receiver. The garbage truck is the transmitter. So you build a barrier between the source of the noise, the garbage truck, and the receiver of the noise, you sleeping at 6 a.m. So a barrier is a structure designed to reduce noise transmission. That's something that we have to understand. Noise transmission, the transmission of noise from the garbage truck to your bedroom. Now, let's look at traditional methods. Look at this graphic here. This is traditionally the way that we've used for barriers. It's, it's high density brick. It's lots of space, different layers of material, but basically density is the objective here. So we're trying to create a lot of mass because mass is necessary to stop low frequencies just like mass is necessary in treatment of low-frequency energy in the absorption process. That's why our ACDA series and carbon panels weigh over 200 pounds each, because you need mass to deal with low-frequency waves, 20, 30, 38-foot waves. So that's the traditional method. We have a different method that we use. It's more efficient. And we're going to walk you through the processes how. We create sandwiches. You can see here, a sandwich is a layer of different layers of materials arranged in different order. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, where do these sandwiches go? Well, they go inside a wood frame, as you can see here in this graphic, the graphic of our CAW process. So, looking at the traditional brick structure, the sandwich approach is installed between the studs where a brick structure obviously would be assembled and, and put together. The best brick structure, by the way, is poured concrete. No seams, right? I mean, think about it. All right, so let's examine what is noise. Noise is vibration. It's vibrational acoustic. So it shouldn't, the term shouldn't really be noise transmission. It should be vibration management. Okay, so we're not really dealing with noise per se, but we're dealing with the cause of the noise, which is vibration. Airborne energy, sound, travels through the air and then it strikes a solid surface, it becomes vibrational. So it's now vibrational acoustics, a little bit different. Frequency response is still a relevant issue, but we're, you know, working on vibrations, not airborne energy. So let's look at some examples. Every noise has a frequency and amplitude. Every frequency and amplitude requires a particular sandwich structure to stop. You can think about these as hamburgers or, you know, sub sandwiches with multiple layers of material. Now, you can see in some of these examples here, they're all different. Well, why are they different? Because they're all designed to stop different frequencies and amplitudes. Notice the outside layer that's facing the noise source. Notice the inside layer facing the room. You can see differences there because every noise has a different frequency and amplitude and you have to deal with that. Lower frequency noise on average below 125 hertz is a lot more difficult to stop and it will require a different design. But that's what it is. What are we doing in here? We're draining off the energy of the vibration. When we're draining off the energy of the vibrations, it's like 
When you're driving in the mountains, you see these emergency ramps for trucks that lose their brakes. What, what are we using? What part of science are we using to stop this truck? It has no brakes. It cannot stop its forward momentum itself. So we use gravity. You can see that the ramp is elevated. Obviously, the higher the elevation, the faster the truck will stop. We're bleeding off energy. We're reducing vibrations. That's what we want to do here. We're reducing the strength. We're taking a snake that's coming through the air, striking our wall, and by the time it leaves the other side of the wall, we want to make it a worm. We want to reduce its amplitude or size or strength. So that's how we have to think about noise. You can see in this final graphic with the CAW process that we actually can integrate noise and treatment in the design. You see the multiple layers of MPF, which define the depth of each of our CAW cavities. So we achieve the depth we need to get the frequency, the resonant frequency we need to tune the room. But we also minimize noise by using sandwiches. So we achieve two objectives. So this is why I always say that sometimes, depending on your noise issue, we can incorporate the noise treatment and the energy treatment inside the room all in one structure. This is an example of noise transmission. When you think noise, think vibration. Hope this helps. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis so that'll help you. Thank you.